In this video, I'll teach you how I lost my belly fat. These are guaranteed things to do in order to see results. For more diet, fitness, and lifestyle videos, don't forget to like this video and subscribe to my channel and also hit that bell notification so that you're notified when I upload once a week, every week. Also, check out my personal Instagram page. It's Michelle Yang with two eyes. So in this video, I'll teach you how I lost my belly fat two and a half inches off my waist. You'll want to stay until the end of this video to see all of my tips for how I lost my belly fat, especially for endomorphs like myself. You'll definitely want to stay because the tips will become more and more relevant as the video goes on. So make sure to stay tuned. So summertime is basically over. So you might think that this video is useless, pointless, who cares, summer's over. I could give you these tips so that you could slowly incorporate them into your lifestyle by doing that throughout the year. By summertime, you'll have a hot body. There was definitely a journey that I had trying to lose my belly fat. There was a lot of trial and error throughout the years and my belly was always my problem area. Even if I worked hard to lose the weight, I would always still have that stubborn layer of fat on my belly. I was always pretty self-conscious about my belly. Honestly, I don't even have any good pictures of what my stomach looked like in the past because I would avoid the camera, especially avoid the camera showing my stomach. I would wear baggy clothing a lot. I'm sure a lot of you can relate to this. Here are some more recent pictures of me in the past month where I've used the tips that I'll be talking about in this video. Here you can see that in the before picture, I definitely had a larger stomach and a bigger waistline and then afterwards after using my tips I decreased my belly size so there's two types of fat that kind of layer our bellies there's the subcutaneous fat that is right on the outside and then there's the visceral fat and the visceral fat is the fat that surrounds your organs inside of your abdomen. And the visceral fat is something that we really need to watch out for. According to Harvard Health and the New York Times, the belly fat, the visceral fat surrounding your organs has been linked to a bunch of serious diseases such as heart disease, which can obviously lead to heart attacks, cancer, and dementia. Honestly, the scariest thing to me is that you don't even need to be obese or obese overweight in order to have this visceral fat. So even in a regular body type, average body type like myself, I could be accumulating visceral abdominal fat and accumulating dangerous belly fat. The visceral fat or abdominal fat is linked to diseases and then also it's basically like another organ that secretes hormones and different chemicals that are linked to diseases that I mentioned earlier. And I don't know if you've read things online but colon Colorectal cancer is like skyrocketing in younger people. Usually it was just for older people, but now that everyone is increasing their visceral fat, unfortunately, the colorectal cancer is really going up, especially in younger people, which is definitely worrisome. So even if it is super important to look good for the aesthetics in order for your clothing to fit well, for you to get that Instagram pic, another reason is for your health and for your well-being and for your longevity. So the title of this video mentions endomorph. Now you're probably wondering what is an endomorph? So there's three types of body types. There's the ectomorph, the mesomorph, and the endomorph. I'll just quickly go over what those types of body types looks like. The ectomorph tends to be thin and usually can't gain any weight, whether that be fat or muscle. Oh, how I wish I was an ectomorph. A mesomorph, it combines the two types, an ectomorph and an endomorph. These people are usually naturally fit and muscular and they combine the two types. But alas, I am an endomorph for sure. Now, how did I know that? Because endomorphs usually have medium to large bone structure, more body fat than others. Women that are endomorphs are usually considered curvaceous or full figured. As I was growing up, I did definitely realize that I was more curvaceous than my other friends. So that kind of tipped me off to think that I'm definitely an endomorph. Now, men are usually considered more stocky or doughy or like roundish. Endomorphs usually have a thicker rib cage, shorter limbs, wider hips, 
and they usually carry excess weight on their bottom half, such as their abdomen, their butts, and their thighs. Sounds like me. <laughs> Perfect, right? It's definitely challenging for endomorphs to lose any weight. As an endomorph, if I try to lean out, it's definitely really hard for me and it takes a lot of hard work and self-discipline. Now, we shouldn't let genetics take control of our lives. Yeah, I might be an endomorph, but there's definitely things that you can do to kind of combat that genetics. And your lifestyle choices are definitely the biggest thing that can make an impact on your life on your belly fat in particular. JLo, Beyonce, Shakira, they are all endomorphs, so they are definitely proof that you can still look really good with a lot of hard work. It's definitely possible to look good, still be healthy, have a snatched body as an endomorph. If you are an endomorph, you'll want to follow these tips a little bit more closely. If you're not an endomorph, these will still be good tips to follow if you are an ectomorph or a mesomorph. So the first thing we need to get out of the way is that you cannot spot reduce your belly fat. So I know that there's the endomorphs are curvaceous and full figured so we might have a good chest, a good butt, and then you just want to like slim your, your belly fat and your waist and then just keep all the other stuff. But unfortunately as getting rid of your belly fat you have to lose weight and fat all around your body so you might end up losing some of your chest or some of your butt. Some people are very different in where they lose it. Some people don't lose it at all so you do just have to um, trial it out and see how your body reacts to weight loss or fat loss the number one thing is to eat whole foods and eat more cleanly. That is the biggest thing for me, is to eat whole foods and avoid processed junk food. That is also the hardest thing for me, but when I do change that, I get results like instantly like no other. One thing that you can kind of just automatically think of is if it is non-perishable, such as a pantry item like Tasty Cake Cupcake, Cake Batter Mix, like Chips Ahoy Cookies, things like that, those can stay in the pantry for years. I'm talking years. So you definitely know that something is not right there. It's definitely processed. That's like a really quick way that you can kind of realize is this a whole food or is this something that has a lot of chemicals in it? And if it is really processed, it is non-perishable, then that's something that you definitely want to stray away from and eat less of. So staying away from processed foods is one thing, but also really incorporating proteins and fats into your diet. The reason the reason is because endomorphs are particularly sensitive to carbohydrates and insulin spikes. The way that you can kind of avoid this is by eating your carbohydrates in the morning. So some protein examples are meat such as chicken, chicken breast, eggs, protein powder, yogurt, soy milk, and then fats. Examples are salmon, avocado, nuts, nut butter, such as almond butter, or even peanut butter is good too. So there are good carbohydrates fruits and vegetables. Green leafy vegetables are really good. Those are like spinach, arugula, cilantro. Potatoes are good too. The sweet potatoes or even white potatoes are good. Brown rice, oats, whole wheat, whole bread, and lentils. If you are to eat any heavy processed carbs, it is best to eat them in the morning because as an endomorph, our bodies can process the bad carbohydrates better right in the morning. Personally, I like to kind of eat carbs at night and the reason is because once I start to eat carbohydrates during the day, I kind of want to keep eating it. So if I start in the morning, then I'll continue to eat it throughout the day. But if I wait until the nighttime, then I'll just eat like a piece of pastry like at nighttime and then that'll just be it for the day and then my temptation won't continue on. I'll just end up going to sleep. So you can kind of tailor the diet to however your lifestyle works the best for you. Generally stick to the tips of the foods that I mentioned a little bit earlier. Now, like I said, controlling what you put in your mouth is like the biggest thing for me. If I cut out processed foods, it really helps with my belly fat and decreasing my waistline. But if you wanted to control it even more, you can go into a calorie deficit. And the way that you go into a calorie deficit is by using a calculator, which 
I can link in the description box below. And so this calculator calculates your total daily energy expenditure. This um, calculation combines your basal metabolic rate or your BMR plus physical activity and, and then it calculates your total daily energy expenditure or TDEE. The basal metabolic rate or the BMR is basically just your calories just to exist. If you were to just sit there and just do nothing for your whole life, that would be how many calories you would need just to be able to sit there and exist. So the TDEE will calculate based on your age, your height, your weight, your physical activity, and then it gives you your TDEE. And so this TDEE is basically what you need to do in order to maintain your weight. So if you did want to lose weight, you'll just have to eat less calories than your TDEE. People usually recommend about 500 calories less every day. However, that's a little bit too much for me. So I go like 100 or even 200 calories less than my TDEE. And then I'm pretty satisfied with that type of weight loss. It's a little bit slower, but it's definitely more sustainable. You can make it less intense if you'd like, just um, tailor it to your lifestyle. Another thing to mention is kind of counting what you eat and calorie counting. You can kind of see what is going on that is making you eat a lot. And so for me, I emotionally eat a lot and it's usually because I'm bored or I'm stressed out and so it's really good to kind of figure out what is the reason that you are putting food into your body. Do you feel empty? Do you feel like you want to just fill your body with something because you feel emotionally empty? Or do you feel um, stressed out? Really learning that reason will help you kind of control what your eating habits are like. If you are really stressed stressed out, you can try to use um, stress coping mechanisms or you can try to journal because sometimes that'll really help me out. I'm an emotional eater so if I'm really um, sad about something or anxious about something, if I journal about it, that really relieves my stress. It doesn't make me um, reach for things that I would just put into my body. Trying to um, get over the emotion instead of writing it out definitely helps me. So figuring out the reason is um, another good step. Comment down below what are your tips to reduce your belly fat. So we went over eating whole foods, we went over eating in a calorie deficit, and then number three I wanted to say that fiber is king. Yes. So fiber is a thick gel-like substance that is in your stomach and it basically helps to block fat absorption and helps with weight management. So as this thick gel in your stomach, the fiber blocks the fat that would otherwise be absorbed into your body. It also prevents constipation, so definitely if you want to feel lighter and less bloated, then eating a lot more fiber is definitely something that you want to do. Personally, I feel really light and really refreshed whenever I go to the bathroom. Sorry, TMI, but it definitely helps with my stomach and how I feel. Also, it helps with feeling satiated or full after meals, and this is definitely helpful Helpful, especially if you're decreasing the amount of food that you're eating and you're not eating as much as you usually are. <clears throat> Fiber is definitely something that will help you feel more full um, even if you're eating less. Fiber slows down how quickly food's digested. So most people feel pretty full for a long time after eating fiber-rich meals. Fiber, it physically fills up the space in your stomach and your intestines, which furthers your sensation of being full. And so all of these properties can really help people manage their weight, especially if you're trying to eat in a calorie deficit. So there's foods that are higher in fiber and these are oatmeal, white and sweet potato, a bunch of fruits such as citrus, apples, strawberries, avocado, pears, sunflower seeds, dates, and prunes. Some other things that have a lot of fiber in them are beans, brussels sprouts, lentils, and broccoli. However, 
However, these things are kind of on a case for case basis because some people can get very bloated from these items. So if you do tend, if you do eat these and you get really bloated, then you might want to try a different cooking process such as boiling instead of like fry panning or something like that because I think boiling might um, help with digestion a little bit better. The fourth tip is workouts, but these are bonus. So in my opinion, the kitchen is still definitely way more important than any sort of gym exercise or workout that you can do. The one thing that I did do that I saw results in was a stomach vacuum. So what a stomach vacuum is, is basically you inhale for five seconds and then exhale for five seconds and then you suck in your stomach and try to just squeeze your back and your stomach tightly together and you'll hold that for 20 seconds. And then basically that's one repetition. And I would do 10 repetitions in the morning and 10 repetitions at nighttime. And I could definitely see results in my stomach with combining a better diet and then stomach vacuums. That definitely decreased my belly fat and then shrunk my waist size as well. Obviously cardio and resistance training are really good, but like I said, they're not necessary. Um, the main thing is what you put in your mouth and what you make in the kitchen. I have done a bunch of workouts like Chloe Ting. She has helped my stomach shrink a lot. Where the real results come from, honestly, is from what you eat. If you guys enjoyed watching this video, please like this video and consider subscribing to my channel. These two things help me out a lot. Um, and also hit that bell notification so that you're notified when I upload once a week, every week. There are a few videos that I've done in order to shrink my waist size and decrease my belly fat and try to get abs. Mm, didn't really uh, succeed on getting abs. So if you did want to check those videos out as well, you can look at what I did in those videos. Thank you all for watching today. Stay safe and have a good week. Bye-bye. Thank you for watching.